All right. <laughs> We're on here. You fucking <laughs> right, mate. Uh. G'day guys and girls, this episode is proudly brought to you by our sponsors, supshq.com.au. Use the code BWB10 at checkout for direct shipping and 10% off. Welcome back, guys, girls, cats, dogs, those who don't don't identify. Notice they're below cats and dogs. Um, To another episode of Bros with Brains. Off to a flying battery. (laughs) <laughs> yeah with your co-host me and i guess ben's along for the ride what's going on i try to turn up sometimes <laughs> only when he's not in america i make no promises <laughs> yeah stabby stab <laughs> <laughs> just tease that one in a little bit the sun's out today i'm feeling okay <laughs> <laughs> that's fair satin's in raspberry lemonade so we should be right raspberry <laughs> i got a little schweppes raspberry like the the Schweppes raspberry sugar free fantastic game changer, yeah. Or just be a real person and have it with sugar. Nah, Pepsi Max brought out cream and soda too. Fantastic. Oh yeah, I've tried it. I don't mind that actually. Not bad. Not no, bad. No, it's not bad at all. I'll give you credit where credit's due. That one, yeah, not bad. I mean, I look. Mean, I mean, Pepsi. It's funny because um, uh, Americans don't have Pepsi Max. They have Diet Pepsi. So I kept referring to like telling everyone yeah. over there to move to pepsi max and they're just like is that like a more sugary one and i was like no what are you talking yeah, about and honestly i don't know if it's in america but in dubai they have pepsi black what's that i, th- I think that's pepsi max ah uh, right it's a black it's a black can like here pepsi max is a black can yeah but yeah, the ad is like max flavor no no sugar like that's yeah the whole- honestly i haven't seen the ads in dubai but i just i remember last time going to the supermarket i'm like Pepsi Black, what the fuck? <laughs> is this like and a liquor for Pepsi? <laughs> Hang on, I'm just gonna plug this mic in. She's a bit flat. No, one job. Um, yeah, what's going on? Not much, man. Not much. Work, train, eat, sleep, bar the training. I've um, I think I, I don't know if I had gastro. Done. No, I don't know if I had gastro. Like you know when you're on the verge of getting sick, but you don't get sick. Yeah was being me for like three days, right? So I had a Bucks party last weekend. No, I didn't like get on things and drink and all that. No, no, I was very chilled. It was a golf trip weekend. So we just basically played golf. Everyone else got nitty titty, but I was just like having one or two beers, eating some food, just chilling out. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, because I wasn't in my own bed. I just had shit, two nights of shit sleep. So I'm like, mm-hmm. maybe it was just the sleep. But then like Sunday, Monday, I was like, you know, when you're... You're hot, you're cold, you think you're going to get sick, but you don't get sick. But you know, if you do something, you're going to tip over and get sick. So I'm like, I'm not going to train. So if I train, I know I'll get sick. So fuck it. I'm going to sit here and do nothing. Yeah. Did some work, watch some TV. Throat started to get a bit dry. Nose was getting a bit blocked. I'm like, okay, I'm getting sick. Tuesday, still throat's a little bit dry. And, you know, and nose is a bit blocked, hot, cold. It's actually been warmer here in Melbourne, like compared to last week. Like overnight, it was like 12, 13 degrees, which is like, 10 degrees higher than last week. So for some unknown reason, in seven days, we decided to get 10 degrees hotter. I thought I was going through menopause. I don't know what's going on. Climate change, climate change. Yeah, well, apparently, you know, that's not a thing. But um, I'm sitting there like, am I dying? Do I have AIDS again? Like, I don't know, like, what's going on? Like, and then all of a sudden, I wake up on Wednesday morning and I'm like, I'd already booked in golf. I'm going to go play. So went and played and I started to crash on the back end. And I'm like, oh, (laughs) I think, I think I've stuffed myself. I woke up this morning at like five to go play and I'm like, man, I feel great. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. I have no idea. So there is like a bug going around because my stomach was a bit, you know, upset. I'm like, I didn't have an appetite, which is a bit, you know, weird for me because I'm always hungry. So it's like, well, I think we're good now. I don't know. But I thought if I trained, I completely and utterly ruin myself. That's fair. I haven't trained. I've just been uh, an impromptu deload. Reactive coaching, self-coaching. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, my coach would be saying the same thing. So, uh, uh, as soon as I do my check-in, he's just going to be like, "Yeah, good call." I'm like, "Yeah, well, it's not like I haven't done this before." <laughs> so weird being objective with my own data. Yeah, right. It's like at the end of the day, for me, where I'm at with my goals, training-wise, it's not the end of the world if I miss a week. I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to die. It's okay. <laughs> it's actually like a uh, an interesting point of a critique I had with um. I got to the start of Isratel's episode on Fuad 
Yeah. And literally like Kotika had straight away. So like they like he's obviously the big push with the RP app because now like Jared Feathers on there, he's a pro. They've got um I think Nick Walker's training with Jared sometimes, so he's on there. Yeah. Like they got this. Yeah, whole, obviously like, that was the connection. Yeah. So yeah, big, big push there. So cool beans. But the way he was describing, right? Like to me, if you're if you're buying an app just to simply start training, or like you like you want like a pre-made app system that's like, oh, the program's a plug and play, you do what you want. That says to me, you're either so far advanced as a client that you don't need a coach, which then even then would be a lie because even the greatest athletes have a coach or you're not fully invested in the business yet. You want to try something for free and see if it works. Like a, a tester, like I want to get the, the light version, see if I can afford it and if it's yeah. worth it. I'll give credit where credit's due because I listened to the whole podcast. Yeah. He does mention that the app isn't targeted at newbies. Right, okay. It's targeted at those that have been in the gym for a while and want more out of their training. They're yeah. just not sure how to go about it. Yeah. So it's like, and he, they do say like, if you've got shit technique, there are videos on there, but it's not the same as having someone in person. Yeah. This is for well, those that know how to train, know what a set and rep is. We don't have to go through yeah. all the basic shit. This is for people that want to get gained and they know how, they know that there's something missing. They're just not sure what it is and they know how to train. He does yeah. say that because as much as, yeah. you know, okay. like, I'll jump down his throat every chance I get. I'll give him that credit. Because that's a big nuance because he started talking <laughs> yeah. when he started talking about the app at the start of the episode. And I was like, hold on. The way you've just described like the self-assessment of like uh self-awareness and perception of recoverability, if you want to add or increase or decrease sets based on the week, even though the app tells you to add sets. I was like, most motherfuckers don't have the cognitive capacity to say, I'm gonna pull back sets this week. If the app says three, you're doing three sets. If you've upped it yeah. to four, they're doing four. And I was like, that's a very assumed level of coaching experience or, or training experience on someone to put. Yeah. Um where I was like, uh, I don't think like you have that ability. We, you've trained forever. I have that ability. I've trained forever. To be able to go, oh, the average person should probably be able to do that. I think it would be a very, very misled opinion on the average yeah, person. I that nuance would, does make a difference. Yeah, I thought I'd give him a chance and just yeah, listen to the podcast. So I thought, uh, we'll see. We'll see. And he's all right. He does address it. He says okay. it's, not, it's not for newbies. So good, can... good call. Fair call. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that, was a little, that was a little side rant I had in there when I heard it. And I was like, hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what else going on? Training, um, nutrition, yeah, work, same shit. Eating lollies. Are you still, in a, are you still in like a reverse growth or growth, or are you cutting, or what are they doing? No, I'm growing still, right? What are you carbs? What are you on? Um, 600. Oh, nice. Yeah, living the dream. Fuck yeah, that's not bad. Not bad at all. No, I mean, <laughs> body weight's holding. I mean, to be fair, the last three days I've barely eaten, so you know, I'm gonna do what everyone else does. And- Add up all the carbs that I missed and eat them all in three meals. Yeah, do it. Fuck it. Yeah, I'm going to eat like 800, no, 1,000 carb meals. Can't wait. I mean, I don't see why not. Yeah. Full send. I'm just going to have like 10 liters of orange juice. Fuck it. And just have like fucking, <laughs> just have like 10 IU of slim per meal. Fuck yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to have them pop, pop. <laughs> I'm going to pop slow acting <laughs> and drink nice. like five liters. Fuck a Nova Rapid, pop another nice. five liters daily. <laughs> That's a good time. Children do not do this at home. That's a good <laughs> session in the gym after that too. <laughs> this isn't medical advice. <laughs> I mean, if you're a pussy, don't do it, but it's not medical advice. Everything you hear on this podcast is nothing but <laughs> opinions and stupid dumb shit that you should never do. <laughs> but if you decide to. Record and tag us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, record it, please. Keep us posted. <laughs> we need to see this shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff. That's good though. Yeah. That's good. What else been going on? Same shit, different day. Man, just getting this back end of this prep this season. Um, you know, we've had we've had a few clients uh, pull back, and I'm I'm actually very, I was, I was a little bit taken back and hurt in the way that they didn't want to have the conversation with me, which made me question my coaching because I always feel like I try to be as open and especially psychologically available as emotionally available as possible. Hmm. So when it really gave, and I think a good part of where this chat will go today is. The, the poorness of coaching previously that some clients have had. Mm-hmm. One of the clients felt like, hey, like, hold on, when have I, when have I ever got mad or disappointed that you put your mental health or, or self, like your physical self first? Yeah. A prep has never should never come at the cost of careers, jobs, relationships. Like, there will always be others, and especially in jobs that are high intensive. I was like. I I am feeling bad now as a coach that you felt you could have that conversation. That's not a reflection of you. It is. They suck. But but then looking back at the experiences I've had previously, I was like, that just shows a very sad state of coaching where 
reporting an issue or like bringing up a problem was like attacked or like criticized. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay. So I, I can see, I can see the hesitation. Hopefully yeah. that wasn't indicative of me or what she, like what they thought about me. No, it's like a um, past experience that they don't want to relive, but they don't think, they don't know that they're not going to relive it with a different person. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we addressed that, but it was, that was totally fine. I, again, I'll always say like, don't ever feel like you need to prep for me. There'll always be more clients that want to compete. And I love working with competitors and athletes all day long. If you get to the back end, you're like, you know what? This next six week chunk just wasn't for me because that's where shit gets really, really hard. Yeah. Sweet. That's fine. Let's make sure you're healthy. Let's reverse out. Take care of your mental health. Let's get you some more food. Let's get you reversing back into a new goal. Don't even stay with me. Go find a new activity. Go find something that's going to rejuvenate your love for training. Go do that. Play golf. That's fine. Like yeah. play golf. Go play your rich white boy thing. That's hundred percent. Do it. But yeah. No, that was good. That was it. Was um yeah. yeah besides that, look, we addressed that. It wasn't negative. Once we sort of addressed it, and it was I was happy as Larry and and fine with that aspect i was like i'd rather that than you push on just for me and feel like shit and ruin your life so by all means um and yeah just uh what else we got going on just a lot of a lot of follow-ups and plans from um a lot of follow-up and plans from the america trip like we got a whole bunch of um new podcast guests different levels of reach now just different uh fields or expertise and stuff that we just didn't have access to before like like we've struggled with on this podcast, we're running out of people to bring on, right? Like it was just, there's just so many, so many people in Australia that we either connect with or can uh, can rapport with and can actually banter with plus educate through. Yeah. Um, and so now having a, a sort of greater network of connections, we've just been able to expand the the guest list a bit further and, and bring some more people on and mix it up a bit, chat shop um, and kind of get into that. So had my first one of those, uh, one of our first Americans on this morning. Kind of got one backed up now every week for the next sort of couple of weeks, which is really cool. We got to get that content out and push that as much as possible. Um, and yeah, so pretty much that. What else we got going on? Training. You've given me a fifth day finally, which is nice. I actually discussed this on the on my chat the other uh, over in America. Um, coaches trying to overcomplicate or over volumize or over train clients that you know they've got to write Karen or Greg a six day program. Legs, push, pull, legs, push, pull, fucking chest, bicep, backs, chest, bicep, legs. And I'm 20 kilos above stage weight, bigger and thicker in every way with still a tight waist. And we train four days for the last nine months. Yeah. Did you tell them that your coach is an asshole? Yeah, it's a piece of shit and wouldn't listen to my mental health issues and didn't want to feed into my neuroticisms of more training. Sweet. <laughs> tell them I'm not qualified to do so. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually really smart because he plays that he doesn't understand, but he really doesn't understand because he knows he's not qualified, so he doesn't play outside his means. You're welcome. But <laughs> I just want you to tell me I'm pretty the way I am and take my money. That's it. I'll take your money, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll still tell you you're fat, but I'll take your money. I'll do the polar opposite. You're, you're still fat, you fat fuck. You need to know your clients and how to motivate them. <laughs> exactly. You look fat, you piece of shit. That's fair. Mo- motivational speech. <laughs> exactly. There's none of this fucking like six inches in front of your face any given Sunday shit. It's you're fat, go to the gym. Yeah, it's not. It's okay to be mediocre. It's not. <laughs> no. You're a useless piece of shit. Get better. Sold. <laughs> Take my money. Um, yeah, no, training's actually been good since so we got back. Got back in the swing of things. Um, we got oh, just a fucking plethora of like pbs post post trip which has been good even though the exhaustion exhaustion and uh fatigue is just it's it set in a bit like it was just it was just a lot on the body after that trip um yep. you know just leg training has just gone out the assholes just like squat press this morning like i keep seeing people load up the squat press it's really good and people are getting really strong at it but like to have cadence in the rep at full range of motion without hip shift is very different to loading up the hot that the, the squat press and actually getting you know yeah, hey, you can pump out heavy reps. That's cool. But your glutes are lifting, your hips are tightening, you're not hitting depth and you're pumping out reps at different speeds. So actually getting progressions like this morning was like 300 kilos, but it was two sets of 13 with like a two, three second cadence. Yeah. And I was like genuinely driving through the last rep. Like I was like, at one point I had to stop and breathe through the finish of the rep to catch my breath again to finish off the rep. And I was like, that's that's a zero. That's a zero. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's set one. Yeah, so now we do this again after two minutes of resting because you know adequate rest because I'm not in a fucking cardio sprint session. So, and this is the last warm up. <laughs> yeah. Now we have the pre warm up to the workouts, the pre workout Euro training. Literally. Uh, uh, yeah, no, just things are good, man. Like it, it's, I've come back from America, and obviously Brooklyn's come back from America 
like she's still balls deep in prep, but I've just come back with new vitalization and everything. I've joined, I've joined Cavs mentor group full time. So it's one of those things where I know where we want to go. Mm-hmm. Brooklyn knows where we want to go. So the unfortunate side of that is being in such an, uh, an isolated, excluded island that connecting requires us to be up at times where everyone else is in bed. So, you know, we, we attended the Alex Famosi, um book launch the other night. Cav got us like a, a special link to that. We attended that the other night, but it was 2 a.m. our time. Yeah, honestly, I was going to say, so that was really early or late, right? Yeah. It was already stuff for us that we were doing anyway. So it got to like 3, 3 o'clock mm-hmm. because you got a bunch of freebies for attending, right? Like a bunch yeah, of that's stuff. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah. And like this, like one thing that really pissed me off, right? So Hermosi has done a really good job of building value through giving. He just gives. Yeah. Like yeah. He, his exchange rate is like five gives to one ask. Yeah. Now during the presentation, and you can see it coming a mile away. He was always, he said, what I'm going to give you at the end is between a Snickers bar and a, t- a Tesla. It's not a Tesla, but it's not less, not, it's not more than a Tesla, but it's worth a fair bit. Yeah. And he started dropping all this like incremental value in what the, like what you'll get from attending the, the release. And it starts coming up with prices. Everyone in the group chat is like, oh, this scumbag, he's finally asking for money. Now he's trying to take money, piece yeah. of shit. He's like changed. Now he's just all about the dollars. By the end, literally just tells you it's free. There you go. Have it. Yeah. So it's like all you snakes were ready to turn your back on him straight yeah. away. And he literally just gave you like $3,000 worth of stuff for yeah. free. Free, yeah. And you're ripping on him before he even finished talking. Yeah, I did hear about it because I thought a few people I know that jumped on it. But yeah, they're like, it was at 2 a.m. I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah. And that, like, that is, you know, knowing full well where we got to be, the the mentorship groups that Cav runs, where it's like a lot of like intricate business connecting. So it's like, <laughs> You come in to help these guys. They help you come in to do your like help your stuff. So it's like helping the guys at the top get to the top, or the guys coming up to get further up, and use people around them that are also good at what they do to make it better. Yeah. So um, you know, me sort of coming in there as like body composition and mindset coaching in the way that I do things um, in that body composition space. Quite unique to what's in there in terms of like there's physios, there's boxing coaches, there's um, uh, business managers, a CEO. So quite unique space where no one else does what I do. So Cavs got me in there for that, but it also means I can lean on people that are also at the top. Brooklyn can come in and help out. Brooklyn can lean on people in there as well. Like it'll just be worth the odd, like I think it's every second 2 a.m. for us on a Wednesday. So it's like you spend six months making that time and giving that, but then it means next time we go over there, We've got two months worth of things to get done or people to say, see yeah. stuff to do. It's a, people don't see the long game. You put the effort in now because it preps you for what can come later. And it's funny because there's always the other side. Nothing might happen, right? Exactly. There's always, exactly. There's always like risk, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't worth the attempt. Well, no, because you need to try. Exactly. Yeah. If we don't, we stay in Australia and we don't reach the level we want to with where the Matter Institute wants to go, the systems we want to build, exactly the people right. we want to reach, the change yeah. I want to make. So if I just stay in Australia, I can stay that typical chip on the shoulder Australian, but like, you know, PT yeah. who's like, you know, I, I kill it over here, go me. But that doesn't help anyone that I want to help globally or reach yeah, exactly the athletes right. and the performance level we want to get to. Yeah. So getting to that means that for a period of time, we sacrifice a sleep in every once in a while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And people don't realize that, that it's like, why would I get up to do that? Because there's also a chance that it, something may not come from it. And it's like, but it also means that something might. It's like yeah, I mean, look, like the risk, it's, there's, there's both sides. <laughs> it's like that article that we wrote, the price of admission, right? Yeah. If you if you don't do anything or change anything at all, nothing changes. You don't get to be in the equation. So yeah. if you stay exactly where you are, doing exactly what you're doing, what you've got is where the limit is. Yeah. If you, even if even if the the change that you make or the the attempt that you make gets nowhere, yeah. you're still automatically now in the conversation more than if you didn't try. Yeah. 100%. I. Uh, the likelihood of me ever being Mr. Olympia is 0.00001%. But I'm more likely to be Mr. Olympia than you if you don't try at all. Exactly right. And you've yeah. got like, you just end up with like with that weak minded people that were just like, I'd rather look at the 99.99% that don't make it and say no. Like, cool. That's why you definitely won't make it. Us, yes. what we're exactly. looking at, what we're trying to do, the people want to meet, literally in 10 days, I've connected with more people at a high level in American coaching than yeah. I ever deserve to talk to. But, yeah. Now, now scale that out five years. What we like, imagine next time we go over and have more conversations, meet more people. Mm-hmm. Now we're doing presentations, seminars. Now we're doing a global trip or a fucking national trip over there to run workshops and like try and tee up where we look for a facility or where's the best location to open this fucking position. 
they're all conversations we have in three to four years time because we went over this time and gave up a few hours of sleep. Yeah. Right. It's like, whoop, you do. Yeah. Crazy, crazy shit. Um, but yeah, so no, we're just excited for that. Um, to get in there, finish off the prep season. Uni's going well. So we had, um, actually probably gonna lead to a very good part of the chat, uh, which I thought would be a nice little point for us. Um, it's not so much a rant. It'll be a rant. It'll probably be a rant. Um, but like, this this week was on on um sorry last week was on what makes a good coach or good coaching or like uh fostering good coaching env- environments and, and that sort of jazz and like the different styles of coach that you can have and where the research shows the improvement in performance and benefits versus uh decrease mm-hmm. um and so we had you know a lot of this stuff having already done it firsthand in what we do for a job it's very much like a confirmation of what you already know but yeah. you get to see more of the data on it. Like we did. You get to the, reverse engineer the process. Exactly. Like I sat down with my, with my um, sports psych lecturer because the week before was on goal setting. Yeah. And I was like, hey, look, I noticed that you do it this way. I've got a very particular system that I use for my goal setting. You didn't include this, this, and this, but it makes sense to me. What do you reckon? He's like, that's perfect. He's like, yeah. why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. It's I was like, like good, cool. well, it's, when I try and tell people about uni, it's having a chat with a, one of my mentees. It's like, uni's really good for teaching you the framework. Yeah, it, te- it teaches you the basics. It gives yep. you, you know, the building blocks, but it's still on you to go develop, and you yep. develop your own. And like you just said, like you, you're like, well, what about these? Because you didn't include them, and you know, your lecturers probably thought, well, I've given you the framework. We're teaching you the yeah. framework. You've just basically implemented your own yeah. onto the framework. Success. Yeah, <laughs> like, I've done my job. Whole, it's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I think, well, and, and you're right, because I think a lot of people struggle with like the way some lecturers are now with the whole trying to appease everyone yeah. is that they don't teach critical thinking. And so students will go through the system and be like, but this is exactly what it says. So that's what I exactly have to do. Yeah. And I was like, well, I don't actually like your approach in this regard. This is the way I run it, but I I, I can see where you've included this. And we actually had a good chat on it. And then, then yeah. you know, that was like, got us talking about the assignment, that sort of shit. And I was like, cool, goal setting is my bread and butter. Like that's yeah. fucking nothing to me. That's, this is fun. So I'm like literally doing a subject that, you know, my biggest issue is always when I understand the subjects, but like, I don't write it in the way they like to hear it. So I don't always get the grade. I fucking hate it. Like yeah. my grade will say a five, but I'll be able to quote more of the literature than they will. Yeah. And, and it's I, like, it's like back in fucking primary school, high school math, where it's like, you know, the answer, but you don't get the full marks because you didn't show the working out. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, I, I, yeah it's seven. I, I don't know how to work it out, but I know that's the answer. <laughs> it's a fucking seven. How do you know it's seven? Because it's seven. Yeah. Well, that's what you need to know. Welcome to literally me and math all through high school. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and like um, I have my first in-class tutorial for uh, counseling theory and pra- uh, counseling, yeah, counseling theory and practice. And it's it? basically like your exposure to learning the different types of therapy and different strategies of therapy and having already studied a lot of them. Again, to me, it was regurgitating stuff or at a certain point actually got to me kind of answering a lot of the questions because people just, they're just stunned mullets. Like no one had, to, had an answer. And it was just like, it was very sad to me hearing some of the answers to questions that people come up with. It was like, so this this week we were just in was on CBT. The CBT is a very solution focused, client centric, evoking type therapy. Like the idea is that the therapist and the the client are on like a mutual power level. There's no like, you know, Freudian psychology is quite, I'm the top dog. I'm going to give you the solution. It's yeah. more so we're at the same level here. The goal is to extract this from you and have you see that there's a solution and you can work towards it. Yeah. And there was just like grown women and even like moderately aged, very nihilistic kids that are like, but sometimes there just isn't a solution. Like there's just, there's just no way to solve it. And I'm like, there is always a reverse. I was like, are you fucking kidding? You're a grown person going through life and your solution to a problem or like, well, basically yeah. we're doing like sort of like mini mini therapy sessions just like talk about a small problem you've been through yeah. and they were just like but you know they said some things where i was like there just isn't a solution to that it just sucked and i was like it's not about reinforcing the actual thing that is the problem the solution is supposed to be how you get past it that's yeah. the solution you're looking at it going well well why did gravity fall that's that's not your job to figure out your job yeah. is to figure out how do what? you stop falling yeah why, why why did the apple hit newton in the head <laughs> that's not the question it happened yeah. how do we get past it he's yeah. got a headache what do you do what next do we- what do we do with this information? <laughs> Literally. I was like trying to get them to grasp that. I'm like, you've missed the point of CBT. Yeah. 
you've yeah. missed the point of psychotherapy. It's not yeah. to just pat them on the back and say like, you know what? You're beautiful. You're, you're valid. You are so right. I was just like, just listening to these conversations. I'm like, oh, life is going to fuck so many of you first. <laughs> like you, <laughs> You're going to get bent over and just absolutely ravaged by life soon. <laughs> and I'm, I can see it happening. But yeah, no, it was good. Fun. Like, it was good fun having that level of like, I've rarely been in classes where I had that level of assurity in what I know. And yeah. to be able to like, take the lesson on and actually give answers that I was like, no, this is the answer. Yeah, this is like, the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, literally. I'm just like, I'm yeah. Mandalorian this shit. This is the way the rest of you shut up. Yeah. But yeah, that was good. We didn't that are good. They don't tell you which way is the way. They no. just say, we had this conversation. Yeah. I like, could go fucking up. You want to yeah, go forward, like, but I could go up. Like, yeah, what way is the way? Like, Motherfucker doesn't point whenever he says it. No, nah, that. Like, fuck, man. One job. It's like the fucking um, the cat in Alice in Wonderland. You could go this way and then disappears. Yeah. What fucking way, motherfucker? Yeah, yeah. Like, thanks, bro. Yeah. Appreciate you reaching out like that, but you know, could you just give me an arrow? Just point. Can I just have whatever you're on because that'll help. <laughs> also that. Also Bruh. that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, things are good. Very like kicking the step, post trip motivation, just like having that next level of people in your circle now. Where like you know, I've come from a place where come from a place where you have to kind of build your circle, right? Like it starts with getting rid of a few people. I don't really want to be around those people anymore. Don't really want to be around those people anymore. And you start to see who the good people are, who you want that actually like, like I'm very much similar to you. I don't have a circle of bros where I'm like, I've got 20 guys we're going to go hang out with. Yeah. I have unique people that I both serve and they serve me in yeah. a fair exchange of relationship and trust. Yeah. And so most of the time it's like, they're not large groups of hangouts. It's more so I can lean on this person when I need and they can lean on me or we can contribute to something and we can share conversation. So it's taken a while to build to that point where the, the people around me are now all leveled up above me. And so yeah. now it's like that entire circle and environment is now to make me better. Well, yeah. I mean, like it's the age, age, age old saying, if you're the smartest or the biggest or the strongest in the room, you're in the wrong room. 100%. Yeah, like get the fuck out. Now it's literally back down to like, you know what, seven years into the fitness game and being able to present and whatnot. That's, that's cool shit. But I've put myself in a position where I'm literally the smallest in the room again. Yeah, exactly. Now it's just time to build and grow. Which is fucking exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are you ranting on this week? Rent. Eh, I'm just ranting. You put it on the mirror. I did. We're going to talk about Matt, what makes it. So I think this is a good topic <laughs> from our perspective. Is... What's on the mirror? That's what we should call it. Like the segment, what's on the mirror? Yeah, we'll get Brooklyn to make a segue. We'll make like a yeah, like a yeah, like when we refer to what's on the mirror. Yeah. what's on the mirror today? And just make it like one of those '90s sitcom like soundtracks come over. Yeah. What's on the mirror? No, it should be like mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the smallest dare? What? Yeah. <laughs> Guilty. Guilty is charged. Um, yeah, kind of like what makes what makes a good coach. I think I think. We often attack, like, yeah, we've, we've attacked this before from the perspective of a client. Like, what should a client look for for a good coach? Mm -hmm. Or what, what should a client look out for to find a good coach? But I think given a lot of our audience are either like mentors, mentees that we work with or people that are following that are younger up and coming coaches, mm -hmm. I think actually establishing, because we're going to have unique views on this as well. I, like, I know working with you and how I worked, we're both different as coaches. We follow the same data protocols and recommendations, but we're different yeah, we coaches. To the same, yeah, refer to the same science and research. And exactly. Like philosophies and stuff like that. But implementation of said philosophies is probably a little bit different. Exactly. There's nuance to what makes us different, which is why someone who signs up for you would find a difference to sign up with me. And versely, the same thing. Like when some, you know, one of the girls is like, oh, I'm looking to get a pal with you. And I was like, well, go see, go see fucking Scaff. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, there's, there's nuances here of separation. The way he's going to drill you is very different to how I would. So exactly. If you're done with power bodybuilding and that emotional side that you need, go this way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think like just having that conversation around like what makes what makes good coaches beyond X's and O's. Because after after reading that book, which by the way, if you haven't read it yet, Coach to Coach, fucking phenomenal book. It actually made me a bit more emotional about why I coach again and having you like remember different coaches that I've had that didn't hate, didn't like their job or were just doing it out of like the fact they wanted some money or like the spare time. But it was the, definitely a, a very good, very good book to read. But it's called Coach to Coach by Martin Rooney. Yeah. Yeah, I have heard it's a good book, but I haven't read it because I don't read. <laughs> no, I mean, I do. I just don't. <laughs> two plus two is five, guys. It's, that's fine. If someone said that, I wouldn't even bother arguing. I'd be like, yep, 100%. You're right. Yep. And you're a genius. 
honestly, that's the level of like not give a fuckery that I'm at now. It's just like <laughs> I'm at that point in life. Like I'm so three. busy now that you know what? If that's what your reality is, fine. Just don't it's press not, it onto people. It's not even the fact like being busy. It's just I can't be bothered. It's like one plus one equals four. Yes, it does. You're 100 percent right. I thought it was <laughs> Windows, but same same. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that'd be a good like a good thought experiment into uh, what makes a, a good yeah, coach if we approach it from the position of like being coaches looking for a coach right because i guess yep. being a bit more experienced and stuff like that so i'm always still of the impression that if you're looking to do something especially like let's keep it to like our field or let's say just body composition slash bodybuilding um you definitely want to be accountable right now yeah you don't necessarily need a coach to be accountable nine ten nine times out of ten yeah like I still have seen high level athletes who can coach and coach, you know, their own athletes and coach themselves mm-hmm. um, still struggle to progress. So whether that be progress from a, a stage perspective, you know, try and place higher mm-hmm. or whether they're trying to you know, build muscle, get a bit more condition for their next show, whatever it may be, they still yeah. struggle. Yeah. And the limitation is that they're not willing to give themselves what they need they tend to give yeah. themselves what they want and yeah. it could be a subconscious thing, um, which I, you know, I don't blame them. It's like the whole thing where it's like, you can't bite yourself and break your own skin. Like you won't yeah. ever bite yourself. Yeah. You won't be able to do yeah. that. If you do, your it's like, won't let you. Yeah. And like the, the whole, like, if you can, like you're a psycho type scenario. Um, so it's like, you know, don't get me wrong. There are those that sit outside the bell curve as it were. Yeah that they can coach themselves and be hugely successful. And nine times out of 10, they do have a network that they refer to. Like um, John Jewett, for example, coaches himself. Yeah, exactly. And he's, he's a very highly intelligent, but also very down the middle, no bullshit, um, just mm-hmm. does what he has to do approach. Mm-hmm. Um, some would call it neurotic, but we're not using that term anymore because it's 2023 and we can't. Um, you know, have that approach with himself, but he has a network around him that he can refer to, exactly. send pictures to, send ideas to, and just bounce off. Um, that's one way to go about it if you were to self-coach. But most people, especially coaches, still need a coach if they're yeah. wanting to do well or progress. Mm-hmm. The other thing with having a coach, especially if the coach isn't like you, um, you get to learn. Like you yeah. get to learn a different approach. Mm-hmm. Um, that you can potentially you, you take things from and it's like yeah you, you, you're not taking someone's approach you, you're picking the things that you like that you can yeah. apply because you can't just apply someone else's approach especially if you don't agree with it or marry or you're married to it if that makes sense or like, if you don't work with that same population yeah well, well that's obviously the kicker right and it's like you can't just be like oh yeah my coach does this so i'm going to do this with my clients it's like well no yeah, exactly your clients aren't his clients or the her mm-hmm. clients like they're, they're very different. So you need, but you can still take certain things. Oh, this happened with me and my coach did this, but this is also happening with my client. So maybe this might work. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that person's showing this. Maybe we need to deload it because that's what happened when I went through the same thing. Oh, okay. yeah. there you go. It did work. Sweet. You learned something. You took something that you saw and you applied it. Um, but again, like the marker of a good coach is like, for me, man, like when I look at my coach, like I've got arguably one of the better coaches in the industry when it comes to body composition and bodybuilding. He's self-educated. Like, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. He's got like a huge, and obviously he's got a huge network around him now. But when I knew him, like no one knew him. Yeah. <laughs> it was really popular in England. Yeah, um, I just got along with his pharmacology work and I'm like, okay, like this is a new way to look at things or a different way to look at things. And I'm like, okay, I like this because I wanted to learn. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily gain experience in terms of, programming and stuff like that because it didn't really change the way i program overly much yeah you know, it introduced me to some new exercises and stuff like that where i was like oh okay different and then it changed my approach to exercise selection um a little bit because i was coming from a powerlifting background versus like yeah. a bodybuilding per se background hypertrophy background um but at the same time it's like i look towards my coach as a mentor like i yeah. want to learn from him yep more so than the coaching side of things because I'm, I know I'm a very low maintenance client. Yes. And he tells me all the time, like he feels fucking bad. He's like, dude, you only ever message me on check-ins. And I'm like, I don't have many questions because if I have a question, I'm probably going to go find the answer first before yeah. I annoy you. If I can't find the answer or I'm stuck, 
I'll ask you for your opinion, which I have done in the past, but it's yeah. very rare. And it's the same with like a lot of my clients, I think uh, my core clients, like that I've had for a long time, they're very similar. It's like, they don't, they know that my response is probably, especially if they're coaches, they're, I'm always going to yeah. say, probably go look for the answer first. Like yeah. there's many resources at your disposal. Yes, I'm a resource, but you also need to be independent a little bit, especially yeah. if it's something very, very basic something more complex nuanced and you want my opinion or experience on it different story because it's yes for me but at the same time you need to have that ability to go to do it yourself so it's like for me my coach is my mentor but i barely hassle him these days because again yeah. science hasn't really changed much in our field for a long time <laughs> yeah yeah that's how no. i feel i agree i think i think like the mentoring aspect is very true like we probably have that similar approach if we took away our friendship in the podcast the actual interactions or intimate intimacies of coaching would be like check-in day and maybe the message after and be like, Hey, I'm, this is what happened. Cool. Like the, what I, what I said here? Um, ah, fuck, 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 fuck. There was something I, no, I'm having a mind blank. I changed something. I remember just literally telling you, Oh no, that's right. I come back from America and I was absolutely dead. And on the program it was like my usual scheduled training day because we'd flown on the Friday and my body was just jacked. I was yeah. like, you have to tell me not to go because I'm going to go and it's going to suck. And it's probably going to hurt me, but I'm going to go. So yeah. you have to tell me not to go. And you're like, well, if you know, then don't go. I was like, yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> this is where you like, um, this is where I'm paying you to say, don't go. I know that. And I know the answer, but as an athlete, not a coach, I'm telling you that you have to tell me not to go. And you're like, well, don't fucking go. And I'm like, that's fair. I guess I won't go. Like, <laughs> okay. That's sweet. That's the end of that discussion. That's about as annoying as I get. But like when it comes to us chatting shit and sharing data and fucking ranting about dumb shit on Instagram and what fucking on the podcast, obviously that extends interaction, but very similar. Uh, There's a thing I ran by the other day. Cause I was like, Hey, this makes sense in my head, but I was questioned about this in terms of the intricacy between caffeine and T3 or T4. Oh, yeah. T4. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> No, no, that doesn't really make sense to me. This is what I'm thinking, but this is what I was told. Um, a client approached me about it and I was like, no, nah, this, this, and this. And you're like, yeah, no, it doesn't. I was like, okay, cool. That's it. I thought so. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, I do like the big messages because you send like pages and I send like three words. Yeah. <laughs> like, blah, 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 blah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it, it doesn't need to be a complex answer. I just need to know that either I was on the right track or I was wrong. <laughs> Short and sharp. No. Yep. <laughs> Okay, this is what I thought. No, nope. correct. Cool. Yeah. Done. Uh, you, you're not wrong. It's like, that's why I say it's like something uh, using that example, like, you know, caffeine and T3 fighting for the same receptor effectively. Like, that's a very nuanced question. Yeah. Like, and you'll probably find data that might say both. Like, yeah. So then you got to look at it from a physiological standpoint. And not everyone would understand, you know, not every coach is going to understand the intricacies of physiology and biochemistry when it comes to that sort of stuff. And it's like, well, that's okay. You, you don't have to know that. Like, mm -hmm. it's not going to make your coaching any better or any worse. Yeah. Just that it so happens to be that something that I have read and understand and know because I am. But I think four that's years older and have no life. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's I think I think I think that's the important part. And this is probably one of my favorite quotes that I read from that book was uh, the very simple job description of a coach is to take someone where they want to go when they don't have the ability to get it themselves. Exactly. in the essence of a mentor or like yeah. like someone coming to learn that destination you're trying to get to is education so yeah. in the sense of like answering those questions whether it be right or wrong simple or complex like just answering that question is delivering that mentor and as a coach yeah you may not need a coach who does mentoring you may just want a coach to tell you x and o but yeah. i think the intention of the coach should always be real after reading that is as simple as it is is yeah. When you're selecting a coach or like when, if you're if you are a coach and you want to be the best coach we're not expecting you to have like all the fucking data and the tangibles and the fucking you know the research in the world learn that over time for sure but provided you always approach it from the intent to take someone towards somewhere where they're trying to get to when they can't get it themselves yeah. and you do it with the intention to cause no harm and you are hoping to be more excited about them getting there than you are about where you want to go you're always going to deliver the best package to a client even if it's not the best result that could have been got, they're going to be ecstatic that a, your entire delivery or energy or enthusiasm is about them succeeding. Yeah. I think that's what makes genuinely a good life-changing coach. Not just like, yeah, you got a good recomp. That's cool. But a follow-up point that the book makes was 
the indication of a good coach is where that person is in 30 years time. Yeah, exactly. Is that person back to being fat in 30 years time? Are they back to being on drugs? Are they back to their life being shit? Are they back to, do they not succeed in, in their sporting career afterwards or life? That to me is like, obviously it's a large sample size assessment, right? It's a very longitudinal study. But if you can look at clients in the future and be like, you know, 90% of my clients improve their entire life after working with me. Yeah. You could probably die pretty happy that you were a good coach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's funny because you're not going to know, especially with a lot of upcoming coaches, like including myself, like how good of a coach that person is going to be, not until it's 20 years time. Right. So yeah. Like, like, how do you, how do you then pick a good coach or how would you deem a good coach? Because a lot of coaches don't have 20 years, 30 years experience that are online, especially considering exactly. it's a different era for, yep. for, for most of them. Right. Um, so it's like, well, how, how do you get by and, you know, how do you know? And it's like the next best thing is well, just looking at track results, right? Yeah. Look at the results of the coach. Like, does the coach get the results that you're after in terms of yourself? Mm-hmm. Like, is your goal to get stronger? So then go to a coach who gets people stronger. Like, that's yeah. their job. Like, do you want someone who gets someone fucking diced? Sweet. Yeah. For a coach whose results show that they get the people diced. It may not be done well, but at least you're on the right path. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's where specificity specificity yeah. as a coach matters in the yeah. sense of like looking for a coach yeah if you're if if i want to learn about yeah. driving and i'm going to someone who fucking plays tennis yeah. i can't be mad that, that tennis fucking coach is not going to teach me how to be a v8 supercar coach driver yeah, that's exactly. just, like, exactly. it's illogical but yeah. like yeah if in the sense of you know if you're if you're looking to be a good coach or looking to find a good coach um or for us for looking to find coaches like you need to look at what they are coaching and is it the thing that you're actually after? And I yeah. suppose, again, like you said, having that track record. And then I guess like, because you, it would be hard pressed or dickish to assume that you should be expected to have all the knowledge day one. Yeah. Everyone yeah. understands an apprentice pro- a process. Everyone understands the the learning curve. Everyone understands the bell curves of, of the, um, what's the effect? Fucking, what do you call it? The um, uh, oh, Dunning-Kruger, like, the, you're going to realize eventually you don't know fuck all and you're going to spend a lot of time learning more. That's where we come in to try and help shorten that distance. Mm-hmm. But the intention should always be to continue to develop whilst maintaining the love of what you do. I yeah. think if you can do those two things simultaneously as a coach, you can't go wrong. Well, you might yeah. have fuck ups or mistakes, but you yeah. can't go wrong. If you're a coach thinking you know everything you've done. You fucked up. Yeah, like, 100%. If, yeah, if you're not a coach who understands that the more you learn, the less you know, mm-hmm. you fucked up. And like, if that doesn't drive you insane, then I don't know. <laughs> it's honestly, it's the, it's the, it's the that don't upskill themselves. And I'm sitting there yeah. like, hmm. It's, it's the, like the coaching, the coaching knowledge paradox. Yeah. The yeah. more you do it, the more you go yeah. into it, the more you realize you yeah. don't know enough and you need more to help your clients or yeah. you need, you'll, have, you'll learn as you learn that what you've learned isn't to help your population. So you need to double down more and learn more. Yeah. But then the more you learn more, they might even not work, want that population anymore. Maybe you want to do something different or maybe you enjoyed something else out, out of that. Yeah. That then leads you to having to study more and catch up more and get further ahead and then continuing yeah. to realize, I actually know fuck all, but I can still coach in the process or the endeavor of educating, of education. Yeah, exactly right. And it's like, for me, I know my process of learning is if I'm learning something new and if I haven't produced a question from learning something new, mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm learning. Yeah. Like if I haven't had a question from something, like if you're teaching me something and it's like, I don't ask you a question, mm-hmm. I'm not processing what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, I, I, I feel like if you learn something new, you're definitely going to have questions. Like, yeah, you can't not like that doesn't make, to me, that makes like no sense if you don't have a question. So, you know, if you do have a coach or a mentor that you're learning from and you're not asking them questions, you're not learning from them. Yeah. So start asking questions, provided it's relevant to what they're teaching. Yeah. yeah. Can you yeah. tell me about string theory? I taught you about protein. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I can give you my opinions on string theory, but they're yeah. probably not right. <laughs> See, like I, I'm, I'm very similar, but also quite unique, uh, uniquely different is like I will, I will map out scenarios of previous experiences or things that make sense to me and confirm them by you if that makes sense. So like if it's, if we're talking about, you know, an example I always give is when I was studying neuroanatomy, when I was learning about like the auditory cortex or the visual cortex, yeah. 
I would compare it to like a rugby league field or a sports field. Where should this position be? Where should this player be? Where should this be? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. So if I add, if, if this maps out this way, that should be where the ball ends up. Yep. Cool. I'm using like uh, an experienced history subjectively to attach that information to and then kind of like connect to it. But that's, you know, that, that's how I know that I'm learning it. Because if yeah. I can fucking interchangeably understand like this is the first uh, first part of the educt and this is where the, the eardrum is and this is where the vibrations will occur and this is how to move through this part of the process that's the ball moving along the line the, along yeah. the, along the offensive line cool i've got that now i now understand that so if you show me again i know oh that's where the halfback goes yeah and i can ask you that if that's correct i can put that into a situation and go okay does that make sense then if that's damaged here that means this player won't get the ball yes exactly right yeah 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 exactly yeah, and that's that's your method of learning, right? And that's where, like, being a, a novice coach wanting to get more experience, it's like you need to go ask. You need to go ask questions, mm-hmm. but being specific on the questions is going to give you the best results or the best answers because mm-hmm. asking generic questions gets you generic answers. And it's it's the funniest ones for me, like watching people on Instagram, for example, like highly educational people. They'll get a question that's very generic yeah it's literally a one word response like yes or no and it's like they've how much protein some yeah yeah it's like they've technically answered your question yeah if you ask more specifically you will get a more specific answer and that's a big thing as a novice or a a newbie coach wanting to look for a coach look for a mentor that's what you want to be well part of the process of what you want to be doing like making sure that you pick the coach that you're Mm -hmm. the person you're going to for knowledge one you're asking them for something that's in their field yeah but being very specific with it. Like I can ask Ben, what is fucking psychology? And I'm going to yeah. get a very generic fucking answer. But then I'm like, what is Freudian theory on blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, yeah. it's fucking specific. So he's going to give me a very specific answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which sense. is ironically exactly why we say when people drop questions, give us more detail. We yeah. want to help you. Well, on this yeah. podcast, we want to give you information. As much as we talk shit our asshole, we get to the point of the question so we can help. So yeah. when you give like a, what would you give for protein for this person? Well, we need more context. Give us more data. Give us more details so we can yeah. actually give you an answer that you can walk away with and go, I'd have to pay these guys a thing. I actually just got information from them. Yeah, and it's like we want to give the best answer possible, not just a generic answer. Yeah, exactly. Like if, if you're going to give a generic fucking statement or generic question, well, then it's going to be 2.3 grams per kilogram, yeah. 2.2 grams per kilogram, yeah, five grams per kilogram for carbs. Okay, cool. Like that doesn't help you though. That doesn't help the question that you had no. or the scenario. Yeah, that's like your entry level question answer for an entry level question exactly so yeah i think like you know in in the aspect of i guess defining to us a good coach well to me it's like assuming or expecting that a coach will always have a result and will always have the perfect answers i think is a moot point because there's just some people just like we either weren't suited together we weren't like we weren't meant to work together it was like the wrong matching whatever That's okay. It's going to happen. It's going to happen a hundred times in your career. But if we go into it with the intent to always provide you the most value possible and make you feel that you got more than you paid for in the sense of like my effort and connection as a coach, but I also always endeavor to take you to the place you're trying to get to knowing full well that you couldn't do it by yourself. That's why you're here. And then always seek to make sure that it was the, it's with the intention to do no harm. And I'm excited about your journey. Then I can't go wrong as a coach. Like I literally yeah. cannot go wrong as a coach, whether you know, I might lose 20 of my clients, but over time, that energy, enthusiasm, and result will lead to another 50. Yeah, exactly right. It's like short-term pain, long-term gain. Which is ironic because you see fucking business coaches out the asshole basically being like, push this funnel and try and make 50 leads and get this. And you want to have 100 clients. Like, hold on. If you actually just connect with the 50 that you have or the 20 that you have, that turns to 25. And then you break through to 30 and you get results and now you get to market those and they're all satisfied and they're all walking billboards. I say, good, good luck getting clients with no results. Yeah. Like it's it's fucking not rocket science. Like if you're a chick, if you, if you you're a chick trying to get results. tits, imagine yeah. imagine looking at a fucking plastic surgeon with no history of doing fake boob implants. Yeah, like I, I don't get it. But yeah, let's not talk about business coaches because we'll just be here for another five hours. <laughs> anyway, should we just do um, that? just um, just tell everyone they're beautiful the way they are. That'll be the way to do it. Yes, tell them mediocre is okay. <laughs> uh yeah let's do some questions all right fuck marry kill it's been a while cybex hammer strength for life fitness i'm a marry cybex i'm a fuck life fitness and kill hammer strength yeah 
<laughs> yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. Okay. This is a, a very. This is one for you because I don't know if I'm. Uh, with how subjectively some clients come in holding their opinions around training, nutrition, and health, regardless of evidence, in your opinion, what's the best way to help them step back and look at these areas from a more objective scope to improve their success? Say that five times fast. All right. So with how subjective <laughs> the clients come in with their own opinions and nuances around coaching or training, yes. well, here's the thing. And that's regard um, regardless of evidence. Regardless so of evidence. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of evidence. And they're not even following the evidence like, some people do okay but all right so <laughs> this is where um we have what's called uh like the anecdotal literature in terms of psychology we can use this for lived lived experience to be a justification of psychological inter intervention or strategy what have you done in the past that's worked well if you're here and you haven't got the results you want and you've been worked. a self you've been self-coached it hasn't yeah. worked Right. So you can say that the data says you should be at 400% volume per week or, you know, 120 sets. That's the upper echelon of your MRV. Well, let's look at your training. Okay. Your actual training is shit. So the sets are uh, uh, redundant. Yeah. But you know that again, you're using the data to make this claim or regardless of evidence, you think that that's what the data is saying. Cool. But if we go by the anecdotal evidence and your, your lived history, that hasn't got you where you want to go. So if you want to keep going down the path you're on, we can make that change to your programming. I'll give you what you think is already working for you, but you wouldn't be here if it was working. So yeah, it's... take the step back and let's take the, the ownership approach and say, what I've done hasn't worked. I'm going to hand it reins to someone else. Give the potential chance that what they are saying is true. See if it works. Likelihood is it will, because what you've done hasn't done anything anyway. So if you're coming in as a know-it-all, Try to fill a teapot that's already full of water and see if it spills. Yeah. You can't well, fill a cup that's already full. Yeah. And for me, the way I look at it is what's the definition of insanity? Literally. Just that. You're still doing the same shit over and over, expecting a different result. You've been doing the same shit over yeah. and over and you're not getting a different result. So why would you keep doing the same shit with your preconceived notion of what you think you know? Um, and the other side to it is it's like the other one that I really do like. It's like if you want change, invite chaos. So yeah. It's like, change your fucking shit get a little bit chaotic with what you're doing because what you're doing isn't fucking working like yeah mix mix up a little bit go yeah, take, like, take the sets back and push a bit of extremity so, in the training. yeah like so if a client if i if i not that i really do i think only once or twice where i've actually encountered something like that where more so on the ped side because obviously like you'd know like there's a lot of bro shit mm -hmm. still around. and obviously i'm a lot more um uh, not so much conservative i'm just a lot more longevity and more health conscious who would have thought being healthy while trying to run. <laughs> um, so like they, they come to me, like I've had one that's come to me in the past, like a couple of years back. And he's like, Oh, I want to do this, this and this, because I want to do this. And I'm like, cool. Well, I need you to get blood tests done. I need you to do this, this, and this, so that we can look at it. Cause like, I don't want to do that. I just want to do this. I'm like, well, do it. Like I'm not putting my name to it. You're not my client. Like, yeah. <laughs> do what you want. I'm not your dad. Yeah. But, same time i wouldn't be doing this if i was you because you've got this this and this and these are your health issues and you know you're 25 kilos overweight good luck like i explain why you should do this and how you should do it and you'll get to where you want to be around here because you'll do it this way but if you want to do it your way go by, by all means <laughs> you, you think you know then why did you why did you message me why did you call me yeah why'd you, what'd you sign up for what did you try to sign uh, up why did you pay me for my consult <laughs> yeah <laughs> you idiot and then and then that just leads to like you know, and that's where having uh, irrefutable evidence of results kicks in. If you are a coach with a bit of long-term history, you can just say, right. your way has got you to hear that it didn't work, but my yeah. way has got these results. Well, yeah, and that's that's where I say, like, results speak. It's like, yeah, you mm -hmm. can talk about, even if you're not a, not a coach, even if you're a client or, you know, an experienced trainee, we'll call it, who's got to where they are and they want the next level, but they can't get to the next level. That's why they've come to you. It's like, well, why mm -hmm. would you think that what you're doing is going to get you to the next level? Because if you trusted it, you wouldn't come to me. You just do it. Exactly. But you're not doing it because you don't trust it because you probably mm -hmm. know someone deep down. It's fucking wrong. So let me take the reins and do the shit. And then if it doesn't work in six months, you know what? By all means, go do your own shit. And just, yeah, just, just be willing to take the fucking ego back a notch. Yeah, people. How do you build the crew, the team, the friendships of like-minded people around you? Did you go look for them or did they find you? I don't like people. I don't know what you're on about. 
<laughs> we're close friends and we're two states apart yeah and it's still too close <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i need further distance america wasn't far enough no nah, well like, dubai is probably the distance like the prime distance for us to be away from <laughs> um i so personally i didn't intend to build like crew friendship thing like that that's never for me personally that's never been my intent like mm -hmm. my intent is just to learn so yeah. it's like I, back in the day, like before this was a cool thing to do. And, you know, back when Skype was a thing, not Zoom, uh, mm -hmm. like, I, yeah, like I literally emailed people, like high level people and just asked them questions and then they'd be offered me like a free Skype call to run through mm -hmm. my questions. Now, never mind, it was like 3 a.m. my time. That's what we did. And it's like, I've still got my original notes from talking to Chad Bezley Smith about programming when it came to powerlifting way back mm -hmm. in time. 2013 or something like that's what i did and it's like mm -hmm. for me my logic is what's the worst that they can say no. yeah yeah not even that right now the worst that they can do is just not reply to your dm because they don't see yeah. thousands of dms what do you fucking do mm -hmm. you know like well, who cares <laughs> it's like if you have a question from someone and even if they're famous like instagram famous we'll call it message them because yeah. you might be lucky and they might just reply. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's really not that complex. You know what I mean? It's like, from there, it just stemmed into meeting people that were like-minded because if you have similar views, you're probably going to meet people that they, they're probably going to have similar, similar views. Their people are going to have yeah. similar views and you're going to be able to get to learn. And the only shit thing I would suggest is also following or trying to make friends even, acquaintances will call, people on the other side. Yeah, they challenge you. Yeah, like just give you a different way to think. And I think that's one of the hardest things for people to do is understand that just because your opinion on something and my opinion on something are totally polar opposite, it doesn't mean that we still can't be mates in the middle yeah. and that we can't give each other ideas about the way we think because it's a different way to think. Yeah. That's never bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think that's... Yeah, this weird, this weird notion, it's like this really, especially in this current climate, um in that you, if someone doesn't agree with your, let's say like, let's go to the extremity of liberals. Yeah. If you're a very left-leaning person right now and you're super progressive and someone doesn't quite hold the same stem as you, like I'm very centrist in my approach. I can see both sides of the spectrum with their own points and benefits and things that are right and wrong, but that's just being a critical thinker. Now, if you go, oh, but you somewhat agree with Trump on these aspects. Yeah, I did. What are you going to do about it? Like you're going to disown me or like not talk to me? Cool, cool. that's your loss. You're just yeah. going to create more of an echo chamber around what you want to hear. Yeah. That's not necessarily what you need to hear. Yeah. Good evolving and developing people seek out challenging thoughts and opinions on what they do need to hear and what they don't need to hear. Yeah. So that to me yeah. is a big aspect of what you're looking for. Yeah. Never feed your biases, challenge your biases. Yeah. And look, in the end of the day, it, there are things, on a bumper sticker. There are things you're going to be right about, right? Like you're, there are things you'll be right about, but if you have the discourse and debate to challenge it first, yeah. you can then go, I'm either more solidified in that position or I'm yeah. further away from it. Exactly right. You, you confirm it. <laughs> exactly. Who would have yeah, thought confirmation I, bias was a thing? I think a, a, a big one for me was, and this is, I think, a huge problem I've identified for people when they try to go through the development stage of like higher thinking or higher circles. And I don't want to sound that as like an egotistical thing. Like I, I'm not some higher thinking intellectual, but more so we like- have, It means we have mental health issues. There's a difference. Yeah, exactly. I'm neurotic. I, I don't care. Is being willing to be alone for a while like people are constantly obsessed with the idea they have to be with people or around someone to the point that it actually becomes more neurotic and detrimental than they think. Like constantly being around the wrong people, but because you're too scared to be alone will actually be worse for your life than if you just take some time to be by yourself. Yeah. Taking time as a mature adult to actually figure out who you are because 99.99% .99 of people have never been asked, what do you actually want and who are you? Who are you as a person? Who are you individual of anyone else? What are you? If a camera was to follow you around 24 seven, who are you? Yeah. Because you spend so much time um, I think it's uh, Plato has a, a a philosophy around the second self. Mm -hmm. And that is he discusses basically like the first point of your life. You spend the first 25 years yeah. living as who you're supposed to be for everyone else. Your parents, your school structure, your educational system, your social circles, the sporting careers you're in, the, the identity you build is all based on the expectations of society, cultures you're in, people you know, family and friends. It's not until you become older some people take way too long. Some people luckily get to get it pretty early. But the creation of the second self is a point in time in which you you realize that that's not actually who you are and you get to explore it. 
So I think a lot of people become scared to be by themselves and reclusive to figure that out and go, oh, well, I'm just this person around these people. But those people are shit. Like yeah. if you want to go have deeper conversations or be more intellectual in the way you think or expand your ideas and you're spending every night at the pub or the club or fucking uh, like clubbing, getting written off your face, then the likelihood of having those conversations is pretty fucking low. So a big part of the, it's what I called the, I wrote the book, um, optimizing your, uh, how to create your optimal environment is separating the wheat from the shaft. You have to actually be able to cut away the shit so that you can get the good part. And sometimes it means letting go of not just adding more people, but letting go of the shit ones. Yeah. Yep. I completely agree. Um, I was just trying to think, was it Socrates or was it Plato? I think it was Plato. I think you're right. Um, okay, I'm going to answer that question. How to start golf? Message Ben. He'll Tiger Woods. Out. Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2005. He'll take you out and show you how to hit a 7 iron. <laughs> Everything's a 7 iron. I don't give a fuck. I mean, how do you start anything? Find a coach. Yep. <laughs> Do a lesson. See if you like it. Um... What else we got? It's funny because I feel like this app auto generates a lot of questions. Oh, really? Yeah, because I didn't have the link up like on a on a story during the week, and I was getting questions. I'm like, how is that happening? But okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I think that's it on my end because the rest of them seem very self generated. <laughs> okay. Um, I got. I think I got like three. Let's go. Let's go. All right, we got the funny one. Would you rather hear what everyone is thinking all the time or have to say your thoughts out loud? I would probably not be alive anymore if I had to say my thoughts out loud or I'd be locked up somewhere that I sh- that is not comfortable. Yeah, I'd probably want to hear people's thoughts over what people... <laughs> yeah, especially if they don't know <laughs> that I can hear them. To what's in my brain. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Like, I'd rather hear the average person's versus them hear mine because that's not a good time. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to offend a lot of people. It's like it's like the uh, Deadpool when he says like, "There's there's what I say that you're allowed to hear, and then there's <laughs> the stuff that's inside that you don't get to hear." <laughs> yeah, they are not the same. No, definitely not. Um, <clears throat> what does it look like between comps? E.g. E. states to nationals, is there a time for progression? Absolutely. It all comes down to time frames, but huge chances for progressions. I mean, between the 10 days of me going from states to nationals, we pulled down yeah, extra three be, kilos. Be specific with progression. Progression as in digging deeper. Yeah. Yeah. You can improve composition. As in getting bigger. <laughs> yeah, you, you can improve. You can definitely improve body composition. You're not yeah. going to get stronger or bigger. Yeah. But you can definitely tweak conditioning to be able to handle more filling to look fuller with a better condition, stuff like that. Yeah. You can still tweak a few things like diet protocols and, and yeah, especially like, between Queensland shows, don't you have like four weeks? I think this season there's three. Your, yeah, your show, your Queensland State show is the first week of October, isn't it? Yeah, first of October yeah, and, actually, and then the last weekend of October is nationals. You've nah, twenty first, twenty first is nationals, which is twenty first. No, twenty first of October. Yeah, that isn't that the Melbourne show. Mm, let me no. check. Let me check. Let me check. Pro league season B Vic is the fifteenth. So the weekend after twenty first, yeah. So twenty first, twenty second will be. Yeah. Nationals. Yeah, because oh, SA, SA is like the 23rd of October, of September. Yeah, yeah, sweet. I thought it was the, I, I always thought it was on the last weekend in October in my head, but close enough. Yeah, but yeah, in that time, you can, you can absolutely still progress and make greater changes. Like most people actually, like, I don't think mistakenly, but a good strategy people use, they use the state show just as like a potential load protocol. Mm-hmm. Then they'll tweak, especially if they're in the contention for winning. They'll, mm-hmm. if they want to take the state show, they'll nail the state show. But if it's just like, I just need to get to nationals to then finish the peak. They'll mm-hmm. just use Nash, uh, uh, states to tighten up, do a small load strategy, yeah. then dig further. Yeah, like literally you're doing the state show to qualify for nationals. Yeah. Like that's it. So you use the state show based on which show it is and how far out it is from nationals to your own advantage. It's a tool, basically. Yeah. It's like practice your peak loading or if you're just not ready, you're just not ready. At least it gives you a time frame to be like, okay, hey, you got to, you know, you know where you what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
What else have we got? We got, oh, what is your protocol for reversing clients out that start up with protocol for new clients that have lowered their metabolism from chronic dieting? So I'm guessing like, yeah, you got um, someone coming in that is pretty fucking yeah, exhausted, yeah. fatigued from over dieting too long. Yeah. So this is where like you and me were talking about trying to like create this whole potential questionnaire to screen people a bit better. Cause obviously the yeah. pre client screening process probably does need a bit of work in general from like everyone. Um, but diet history, dieting history is a big one and understanding, especially if they're more gen poppy type clients, not necessarily athlete per se. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of obviously gen pop or more gen pop style clients will have yo-yo dieted both male and female. Um, whether they've done it successfully is another story, but they have attempted to yo-yo diet. Like they've tried to do the low calories, no carbs, zero fat, keto, fucking caveman. What is it? Ca- uh, paleo, like all that sort of shit. Um, and probably not understand the metabolic stress that it causes. Um, for me, like I've got two clients currently going through a genuine maintenance phase for six months. Like, yeah. And we, we've planned it. We've said it. They've like, they've agreed like, Hey, we're just going to cruise for six months on maintenance and try and slowly build your maintenance because maintenance yeah. isn't stagnant. Maintenance mm-hmm. is always moving. The more muscle mass you do, the more activity you create, the higher your maintenance gets, which is obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so for clients that have actually, like they come to me and they're like, oh, hey, like, you know, I want to do season A next year. Cool. What's your dieting history? I've been dieting on and off for four years. Maybe not. <laughs> no. How about no, Scotty? Yeah, like I don't want to have to drag you down to six hundred calories to die. Yeah. No, like you might be willing to do it. Awesome work ethic. Love it. I'm here for it. But <laughs> yeah, we can have that same work ethic with more food. Yeah, I'm. I'm here to look after your health first. Yeah. That, like my personal job as a coach is your health first, regardless of what your goal is. I'll always have health mm-hmm. first in my head and trying to do things as healthy as possible regardless if the endeavor is healthy or not, which let's mm-hmm. be real, bodybuilding is not a healthy endeavor. We all know yes. that. I will try and make it as healthy as possible. Like we know drugs are bad, but we try and make them as safe as possible, even though they will never be deemed safe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's pretty straight fucking forward. So yeah, with that type of client in particular, I would be be honest. It's like, hey, you may not like this answer because yeah. it would mean that for four to six months, we're not doing much. But I think, again, that's a sign of a good coach, though, because yeah. we're not willing I, to just take your money and lie. Well, the proposition of the way I, I position it to them is, okay, look, we're going to focus on your performance. So we're going to mm-hmm. have progression. We're going to progress in the gym. Like, I want to see your fucking bench press, for example. Not that I give a fuck about bench press, but let's use bench press as an example. I want to see you go from one plate aside to two and a half plates aside in six months. Mm-hmm. Like, Let's create, let, let's have an, an absolutely outrageous goal. Because if we yeah. fall halfway and you get a fucking plate on, shit, dude, like, hello. Mm-hmm. And, and guess what your body does in response to that? Yeah. It puts on muscle. Yeah. <laughs> guess what that means? You look like you fucking lift. Yep. Guess what a beautiful byproduct of that situation is? You tend to drop a little bit of body fat and mm-hmm. you tend to look a little bit better. <laughs> and we probably jack up your protein so you recover more. And guess what happens guess, with more protein? It's what happens when we get to do all this. We get to feed you more food. <laughs> like, you're yeah, living I agree. Living. So it's like yeah, positioning it in a way is the tricky part, I think, and where a lot of coaches will probably break down with that type of client because a lot of people want to make the client happy and just say, yep, we can do that. Yep, yeah. we can do that. It's like, yeah, you can, but do you not realize the implications of what you're doing to your client potentially? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Um, all right. Last one I got. Do, 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 do. What is your niche as, niche as a coach and how do you decide on that niche? Um, I mean, very, very quickly, given that I've spent, this is my second time build, building a business in coaching. This is a lot more systemized and strategized and structural than I've ever done. Um, but like, the niche realistically I identified and we did this a long time ago was me working with, but not me in the sense of like, you gotta have my exact personality, but more so like I need you to want to go forward at a rate and level that you'd never been before. Mm. And I'm going to be the guy to facilitate that because if you come to me with like an endeavor, I'm not going to shut down that it's too crazy or too big or like that's extreme. I'm going to give you the structure and tools to get that. So in terms of niching, like 
I have recognized that I use bodybuilding as the vessel for delivering high performance coaching because usually in our system, when someone goes through bodybuilding or bodybuilding style program or strategy, i.e. body composition, um, I tend to find the way we set goals and structure life, that life gets better with it. So it is deli- like facilitating a high performance endeavor with a body composition result. I don't set out to just coach bodybuilders. I just use a strategy like bodybuilding because it's so in- life inclusive that we tend to improve everything along with it. And you just look better. You're more fuckable. You look more attractive. You look fitter and healthy. You feel more confident. What does that result in? A better life. Yeah. It's like, who would have thought you coach the thing that you love? Yeah, I know, right? Wow. Rock yeah. Science. <laughs> and like, yeah, you can get down to the nitty gritty niche of like, you know, 25 to 35. They have this trade. They do these yeah. jobs. But the niche in terms of what we deliver is a system that uses bodybuilding as a vessel for understanding, comprehending high performance lifestyle optimization. Yes. That's really as complex as it needs to get. Um, but from that, I've also now got guys that put endeavors into things like acting and to things like uh, SAS, fighter pilots. Like the, the high performance route isn't just, hey, you have to get on stage. It's just that through the skills of understanding psychology, through the skills of understanding body composition, physiology and training nutrition, is that I can tend to improve all aspects of a client's life forward so that it's not just like you know as, as we've said before if you develop a great physique but you're literally addicted to crack to try and pay for it that's not our job done if exactly. you build a if you, i'd rather you be eight percent than five percent but have a positive life and be going forward in your business your career education have a, a loving relationship then be five percent year round but you want to kill yourself and you hate everyone yeah exactly that's so. not my job as a coach that's me just getting a result with body fat yeah yeah and i mean myself like i fell into strength training my first i was a rehab specialist at one point in my life i had Mm -hmm. a client who needed to rehab her hip because some other coach who was trying to teach her how to squat but taught her the wrong mechanics for her morphology try to put a one size fits all approach to squatting with a barbell completely busted her hip came to me progressed really fast like hey i want to do a powerlifting comp because i want to express this strength absolutely crazy strong and it just took off from there like Mm-hmm. It's really it. And like I specialize, I still specialize in powerlifting coaching. I've got two that competed at Pro Raw, one that came second, I've got one that pulled for first, and then he just decided to pull the lift. The weight that he needed to pull to win, he missed at comp. Mm-hmm. He just pulled it for three. Just a casual 320 kilos, more than three times body weight, just because he could. Is that all? Yeah, just because he can. So it's like <laughs> I coach a high, a lot of high level powerlifters. Mm-hmm. I look after a lot of people that do very well in body composition. And then I also consult with a lot of people on PEDs, especially that just happens to be my forte mm-hmm. um, and nutrition with both WBFF, IFBB pros for, yeah, I mean, body composition, bodybuilding, whatever you want to call it. And then I also coach people to do body composition stuff and bodybuilding. It's just, it was just a tag along, but my original was strength, powerlifting. And then I just added tools to my toolkit really. Mm-hmm. But, Nutrition was pretty straightforward and simple. Like I, you already knew a ton, got qualified in it, simple. And then PEDs, it's like there's no qualification you can do in PEDs. But it's like I've done literally two and a half years, nearly done with a full degree in pharmacology just because mm-hmm. COVID was a boring time, I thought, and I actually ended up getting user and couldn't finish it. But at the same time, it's like the level of knowledge I had, I didn't get from the degree. It was just more, hey, yeah. I can kind of sort of, but not really talk about it because I have a degree in it. But it's like you don't have a degree in it because no one has a degree in talking about that stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> so instead i did exactly what the question was about mentoring and finding mentors found mentors paid them a lot of money and learned from them mm-hmm. crazy who would have thought ask them very specific questions not all what crazy is testosterone? Shit. what is testosterone what is a hormone what um, that's all i got that yeah. is all i got that's the that's it that is uh that's all very good well that's it from us <laughs> yeah that was a very good chat very good same episode time. same bat channel next week probably i'll probably change the time let's be real <laughs> yeah keep, keep ben interested keep it on yeah just keep mix it up a bit you know yeah 100 percent. we're just gonna do it at 3 a.m get him training yeah why not i mean we're done before. Before. fuck it yeah fuck it send it all right that's it all from right. us thank you guys thank you and goodbye <laughs>